Aaron Rodgers is back. That and more on today's edition of Locked On NFL. The new Locked On NFL. The madman Tyler Rowland is your double shot of NFL espresso. With the Locked On local experts on every major story. Get ready. Rowland is revving up. The new Locked On NFL starts now. Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Football fans, welcome into the new Locked On NFL, bringing you a double dose of the NFL's biggest stories with the help of our local experts that know your favorite teams like no one else. I am your host, the madman, Tyler Rowland, joined today by Locked On NFL expert, the mastermind himself, Ross Jackson. On today's show, we're going to talk about some 0-2 teams that are on notice this weekend. We're also going to talk about some undefeated teams, and which of them may be a fraud. Before we get into that, though, Thursday night football and the New York Jets and Aaron Rodgers are back. Do want to first thank you, though, for making Locked On NFL your first listen of the day and for being an everyday or here with us at the Locked On Podcast Network, where it is your team every day. Make sure that you tune in later and step into the barber shop with Tony Wiggins as he chops up the best NFL topics on the second edition of Locked On NFL. Today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL. Use the code locked on NFL, all lowercase, to win $50 instantly when you play $5. Ross, it was domination by the New York Jets on Thursday night football, 24 to 3. Aaron Rodgers had a fantastic game. And for a, a little recap, we're going to go to my guy, John B. From Locked On Jets. It was a very enjoyable Thursday night for Jets fans. I'm John from Locked On Jets. And for the first time in 2024, the New York Jets looked like an upper echelon team week three as they dominated the New England Patriots 24 to 3 on Thursday night football. The Jets improved their record to 2 and 1 on the season. This is exactly what you were looking for. The Jets went out there and controlled this game from the outside. An outstanding performance by Aaron Rodgers. 27 of 35, 281 yards and two touchdowns. And a defense that's been very up and down the first two weeks, especially against the run, really came to play against the Patriots team that had been running the ball effectively. The Jets hold the Patriots to 139 total yards in this game. This Jets team entered the season with Super Bowl dreams. Through the first two weeks, they did not look like a Super Bowl team. They were blown out week one in San Francisco. and week two, they beat the Titans. It was a little shaky, though. This was the first time the Jets looked like the upper echelon team their fans are expecting them to be this season. For more on the Jets, tune into Locked On Jets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Look, I get the Jets fans are happy from this game. This is what Jets fans have been waiting for for over a year now, to see Aaron Rodgers play the way that he played. I do believe that the Patriots had beaten the Jets mm -hmm. at home Seven times in a row. So the Jets get that monkey off their back. Aaron Rodgers looks good. The defense looks the way that it's supposed to look. But let's pump the brakes on the Super Bowl term. I mean, yeah, look, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the Jets got dominated by the San Francisco 49ers, who are an actual Super Bowl team. And they came out and beat the Titans and the Patriots, who I don't think anybody is picking to even be playoff teams this year. So I think the Jets fans should be happy. Aaron Rodgers was impressive. But let's just relax on the Super Bowl talk. Yeah, absolutely, Tyler. This is not the game that you turn around and then you say, you know what? This is it. This is what we've all been waiting for because there's so right. much of it that happens on the other side of the ball. And look, I'm never really a guy that's going to say, you know, when a team does well and when a player makes good individual decisions, good decision making like Aaron Rodgers did, I'm never somebody that's necessarily going to knock that part of it down because of the opponent. But looking at the larger conversation of a Super Bowl team, that's where I say, remember the opponent. But we can celebrate here a little bit that Aaron Rodgers is back, and that's typically good for the NFL, a guy that spent more time making headlines off the field than on the field as of late. And so great mm -hmm. to see that. The first time that the New York Jets have scored three offensive touchdowns in each of their three opening games since the 80s. Tyler, you got to go back to 89 wow. to find that. So great to see that uh, for New York Jets fans. Yeah, Jets fans deserve to be excited. They should be excited. I will say this, though. The Patriots beat the Bengals week one and mm -hmm. took the Seahawks to overtime in Seattle last week. So while the Patriots are a team that not a lot of people believed in before the season, they may still be a little bit better than sure. what people were expecting. And then maybe we look back on this win by the Jets and say, hey, maybe it was a little bit of a better win than we thought 
immediately yeah. just based on our preseason expectations. But on the flip side, we do got to talk about the Patriots side of this thing and how deflating for them to come out and look like a totally different class of team after two very competitive weeks. And again, that win in Cincinnati. But you look at the performance of the offensive line from the Patriots, obviously going to leave people in New England a little bit worried. And uh, we're going to go to my guy, Mike DeBate, from the Locked on Patriots podcast to break down the performance. The New England Patriots defense, which had been their strength for the first two games of the 2024 NFL season, simply had no answer for Aaron Rodgers on Thursday night. And as for the offense, they continued to sink deeper into despair. I'm Mike DeBate, host of the Locked On Patriots podcast. And New England simply was not competitive in East Rutherford on Thursday, bowing to the New York Jets 24-3. The Jets outgaining the Patriots offensively 400 yards to a measly 139. New England continues to have difficulty moving the ball in the passing game, and their running game was only able to muster 78 yards on the ground. Patriots' makeshift offensive line continues to be porous as quarterback Jacoby Brissett was pressured seemingly on every drop back. One thing is clear, this offense needs to come alive and it needs to come alive quickly because averaging 2.9 yards per play, gaining only 61 yards in the passing game and 78 yards on the ground offensively is clearly not going to get it done. He is 100% right about that. It is not going to get it done, but let's talk about the elephant in the room. You want to talk about the passing game for the Patriots. It's hard to have a great passing game when you give up seven sacks. Yeah, Seven man. sacks. Jacoby Brissett sacked five times and injured by the end of the game. I don't think it's going to be something that affects him long term, but he was definitely sure. getting beat to crap out there. Drake May comes in, gets sacked two times. Ross, mm -hmm. honestly, my big takeaway from the Patriots side of this is that offensive line is so bad. There is no way that they can go to Drake May. They have to stay patient here. He cannot play behind that O-line. I'm with you 100%. I'm so sorry, Jacoby Brissett, but you're going to have to sacrifice yourself for the greater good here and just take this uh, take this beating uh, down in the backfield uh, when you're, you're not going to put Drake May out there. And then yeah. I, you know the thing that becomes really interesting, too, is that if something happens to Jacoby Brissett, you feel like you have to go to another quarterback. Do the Patriots make the decision to go to Joe Milton instead of the guy that they believe is their future in Drake May for that very reason. Stinks to put anybody in that situation. Or maybe you go yeah. and grab like a, a veteran on the market or something like that and say, you know what, we're not going to put either of these young guys behind yeah. this offensive line. Both of that, those those options uh, would make sense to me. And, and I'll, I'll say real quick to Tyler, like not only did that pressure end up having an impact because it got to the quarterback, but it kept everything from formulating or anything from formulating for yeah. the uh, New England Patriots in their passing game. We heard about wide receivers being a little frustrated about not being a part of the passing game. Jacoby Brissett completed just one pass beyond 10 yards in this game. One pass beyond 10 yards in terms of air yards. That is not going to work uh, for this New England Patriots offense if they want to get anything off the ground. And the reality is when you're getting pressured like that, it's going to be impossible to throw the ball long because you got to wait yep. for that stuff to develop. And yep. let's just be honest. The offensive line talent isn't there. The wide receivers, I like their young wide receiver group, mm -hmm. but it's a young wide receiver group. Jalen Polk is a rookie. Javon Baker is a rookie. Pop Douglas is still a young guy. Like it, It's just going to be tough for them. They don't have enough talent on offense to really expect much more, and I think the Patriots are going to slowly become the team that everybody thought the Patriots would be after that week one surprise against Cincinnati. But with that being said, big slate of football in week three in the NFL. Some 2-0 and teams that, quite honestly, I think are fraudulent, and they play each other this weekend. And then some 0-2 teams. We'll see who we think can bounce back and still make the playoffs. All that and more on today's edition of Locked on NFL. Do want to let you guys know that today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. Look, you've heard me and everyone on the network talk a lot about FanDuel. It is America's number one sports book, after all. But I got something just a little bit different for you now. Now through September 22nd, all, that's right, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Then, with a YouTube TV base plan, you'll be able to watch every regular season Sunday afternoon out-of-market game all you need is a Google account and a current form of payment, and you can cancel at any time. 
You want to know how to spend that $5? I'm just saying Houston Texans money lines looking kind of good to me. But with that being said, make sure that you visit FanDuel.com and download America's number one sports book today. All right, Ross, let's continue today's edition of the Locked On NFL Podcast. Mm -hmm, Broke down that mm -hmm. Thursday night football matchup. Aaron Rodgers is back. Maybe, kind of, sort of. Jets fans should be excited. But, again, we're going to look forward to the rest of this slate. We got a lot of teams that are 2-0. So, eight teams sit at 2-0, and and four of them play each other this weekend. So, what I want to do here, Ross, is just kind of look at some of these 2-0 and teams, and let's play a little game and see if we can oh, spot, I love it. Fraud, spot the fake team. That's <laughs> now, one of the big matchups of the weekend is the 2-0 and Minnesota Vikings against the 2-0 and Houston Texans. And while the Texans are 2-0, and it appears that some people in Houston still are a little bit worried. Let's hear from John Hickman from Locked on Texans. And that's the biggest storyline for the Houston Texans okay. going into week three. You know, first and foremost, how can the Houston Texans offense kind of, you know, fix some of the issues that we saw during week two? And not only that, who's going to be your starting running back? Because regardless of how good C.J. Stroud has looked, regardless of all the weapons, and I'm talking about a plethora of weapons that he has to choose from and the wide receiving unit, you know, your offensive line, even though they had shaky production against Chicago, you know, it's still pretty good sort of say and even at your tight end unit this is a team this is our offensive coordinator and Bobby Sawyer who still relies heavily upon the run and as of right now after Wednesday's practice both Damian Pierce and Joe Mixon both of them were sideline and as of right now they are questionable for Sunday's game against the, against the Minnesota Vikings and I'm looking at it from a standpoint if the Houston Texans cannot establish a run against the Minnesota Vikings it could be another situation where we're looking at the Houston Texans is often saying, you know what? Yes, you have CJ. Yes, you have Stefan. Yes, you have Tate. Yes, you have Nico. But it's still going to look a little bit discombobulated only because a lot is still heavily dependent on the run. Okay, fair enough, especially in this year in the NFL. The run game is important. But I just got to say this. The Texans still have Cam Akers. And Cam yep. Akers is probably a better fit for their zone run system than Damian Pierce anyway. That's why Damian Pierce basically got phased out of the offense last week. Which is, the only thing which I will is crazy. say, it, it, right, <laughs> after he had a good rookie year and then to see mm -hmm. him get phased out, but it's because he doesn't fit Bobby Slowick's yep. scheme. He's more of a gap runner compared to a zone runner. But mm -hmm. to me, it's more about running the ball so that you can prevent the heavy blitz from Brian Flores yeah. and the Minnesota Vikings. Like that, I'm not so much worried about the talent. I'm just worried about the game flow and how Minnesota can capitalize but I got to say this, Ross, and you tell me if I'm crazy. I think this is a week where we come out of it and say, all right, maybe the Vikings aren't as good as we think. I think Houston is for real at 2-0. I do not think Minnesota is as good as the 2-0 record presents or the win against San Francisco makes them seem. I think Minnesota is going to eventually come back down to earth, and I think the beginning of that is going to be this week. And then they play the Green Bay Packers in Green Bay, probably with a healthy Jordan Love. And I think the Packers win that game as well. And Minnesota being 2-2 two and two after a month is going to feel a lot different than how people feel about Sam Darnold in Minnesota right now. Yeah, I'm good. I'm, I'm going to be a little bit unfair to Minnesota here because the fact of the matter good. is that if Minnesota wins this game and Houston walks out a loser, I don't look at Houston as a fraud. I look at right. Houston as a team that's managing injury and wasn't able to get its run game going. It was impacted mm -hmm. by the game that the NFL is, which is a game of attrition and there's right. some truth to that for minnesota as well right but it was at an unknown factor when it came to jj mccarthy and all those other things you went to the veteran and sam Darnold, who by all accounts looks really really good or much better i guess than he has yes. uh working with kevin o'connell over there the head coach and offensive play caller for minnesota which thank goodness the minnesota vikings had the wherewithal to have patience around that development um right. or, or the development of that head coach but i think i'm still more likely to walk away if minnesota ends up losing despite the injuries that houston is dealing with of looking at minnesota as the frauds and yeah maybe that's a little bit unfair but that's the nature of the nfl and that's a situation that i could see the these two teams walking out of 100%. Now, on the flip side of that, the other game with two 2-0 two teams, much more unexpected. The Los yeah. Angeles Chargers and the Pittsburgh Steelers. 
And we're going to hear from Chris Carter about that matchup from Locked On Steelers. It is an interesting start for both of these teams. Jim Harbaugh, new to the Chargers, not new to the NFL, a well-respected coach. Uh, you know, I'd say similarly to Mike Tomlin. You got two teams that are playing a style of football that I think a lot of people were thinking, oh, that's long and dead. You don't play defense first and running the ball and controlling the clock. You pay fast. You pass the ball. You throw it all over the lot. And these two teams are punching against that right now. When you look at how these two teams match up, David, it seems to me like they represent the new wave of the NFL that is kind of going back to an old school wave, if you will. They do say that history has a tendency to repeat itself. Uh, and we know that running the football, establishing the line of scrimmage, and dominating time of possession is one of the ways that you can win in this game and also playing incredible defense, right? That's the other thing that you have to have along with that if you're not going to throw it down the field and attack vertically. Look, the formula that they're discussing and David Drogemeyer from Locked on Chargers throwing in some good insight in there at the end of the clip as well, along with Chris Carter. The formula of playing defense, running the football, controlling the possession, all that, that's probably always going to be currency in football. Mm -hmm. It's just the nature of the sport allows you to win that way. But, Ross, i got to make a confession. Mm -hmm. I think both of these teams are frauds. Like, oh, interesting. Team, I think the, the Steelers can make the playoffs, but I think because of the lack of preseason, it's like people are freaking out about the offensive output in the NFL right now. And I think a lot of it is just teams don't play in the preseason anymore. And the the first month of the season is the preseason. Look, it's not like the NFL is going to go back to the dark ages here. And it's going to be all about running right. the ball. And obviously the, the too high safety shell and all that contributes. Like there are some things that have to change because of how defenses are playing. But yeah. the Chargers played the Raiders and then the Panthers. Okay. Like, there, so one of these teams is going to go to 3-0 and this week, and neither of those teams, in my opinion, are good enough to be discussed as 3-0 and undefeated teams. I'm sorry, I just don't buy either of them. No, no, no. It's actually, I thought I was going to be the one to throw the curveball here because I was going the opposite way. I think both of these teams have a real potential to be the real deal because there's one thing that we haven't discussed yet when it comes to them. It's not just defense. It's not just a run game. It's coaching. They both have excellent right. coaching on both sides yeah. of the football as well when it comes to both of these teams, and that could make a massive difference. The Pittsburgh Steelers, you know, you walk into the season with nine wins with nine Mike wins. Tomlin. Like, you, yep. you just know you're going to have that, right? And yep. so I think that, like, coaching ends up making a big difference. And this Los Angeles Chargers start, I think, is just as much about sort of their belief in themselves around, uh, around Harbaugh than it is around – you know, the opponents that they played or lucking into wins, which, hey, even if you were talking about now the Chargers lucking into wins, we've never had that conversation before because all we've ever seen was them having bad luck in the losses. That's all we've yeah, ever exactly. seen from them. So I think the tide might have changed for both of these teams. There's a lot of season left. We'll see where it goes. But I think if you're looking to check three major boxes, defense, run, head coaches, these are two teams to keep an eye out on. Well, the number one box that I think you really – really need to check in today's NFL is offensive line. And at the end of the day, sure. the Chargers, yep. in my opinion, have a better offensive line than the Steelers mm -hmm. do. So if I had to pick one of these teams to, you know, put my faith in, I would pick the Chargers over the Steelers yeah. at Makes this sense. point because of the offensive line difference. But still, if either of these teams make the playoffs, I'm going on FanDuel and I am betting against them in their playoff yeah, sure, matchup. That's sure. no <laughs> doubt about that. But rapid fire, Ross, rapid fire, quick. The undefeated teams in the NFL, Vikings, Texans, Chargers, Steelers, Saints, Bucks, Bills, Chiefs. If you had to say one of those teams was not going to make the playoffs after starting 2 0, who is it? Minnesota Vikings. Easy. Okay. Yeah, I'll go with the Vikings as well. But we're going to flip That's that conversation three. on its head and talk about teams that are 0 2 that should be on notice that their season could be uh, getting late pretty early. So we're going to talk about that and which of those 0 2 teams we still believe in. More coming on today's edition of Locked On NFL. Do want to let you guys know that today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Look, Prize Picks is the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. It's why Prize Picks has over 5 million active members. All right, here's how it works Prize Picks has a projection for every player. I'm just going to make up some examples off the top of my head so I can drive home the point here for you. Patrick Mahomes, 225 passing yards. Travis Kelsey, five catches. Uh, 
Jameer Gibbs, 80 combined yards. You see what I'm saying here, all right? All you do is pick two to six players and say whether they're going to do more or less than the prize picks projection. And if you hit, you can now win up to 100 times your money on prize picks with as little as four correct picks. Prize picks is the best way to get in on the action in most states, including California, Texas, Georgia. I love prize picks. I know you will as well. Make sure that you download the prize picks app today. Use the code locked on NFL and get $50 instantly when you play $5. That's code locked on NFL on prize picks to get $50 instantly when you play $5. You don't even need to win to receive the $50 bonus. It is guaranteed. It's prize picks. Run your game. All right, Ross, we're going to cap off this Football Friday edition of the Locked On NFL podcast. We talked about the Thursday night football matchup, talked about some of the 2-0 and teams that are facing off this weekend, but now we got to look at the, some of these bottom feeders, Ross, because mm-hmm. it may only be week three, but some of these teams, the season is slipping away fast. Mm-hmm. Before we get into it, do want to thank you again for making Locked On NFL your first listen. Make sure that you tune in this afternoon and step into the barber shop with the barber himself, Tony Wiggins, and chop up all the best NFL conversation. But two teams that I got on my notice list, Ross, like their season could be over quick. Number one, the New York Giants. And number two, the Denver Broncos. Now, it's bigger than just losing games. And I'm going to throw it to the GOAT, Patricia Trainer. (laughs) <laughs> from Locked On Giants to explain exactly why the Giants fall into 0-3 could be a bigger disaster than people realize. I think the big thing for the Giants is going to be the state of their, for lack of a better term, their mental health. Where are they mentally? 0-2 against two teams they should have beaten. The Minnesota Vikings who blew them out. I mean, the Giants didn't even deserve to be on the same field with the Vikings who looked that good. And then last week, the heartbreaker, against the Washington Commanders. And look, losing, you know, you've got to be tough. You've got to be resilient. You've got to shake things off. But after a while, it can start to build up. You can, it can, if you're not careful, you can start to question, why am I going through this? Why am I, you know, getting beat up physically if we're not going anywhere? I mean, these guys are professionals. They get paid. It's their job. But they're also human beings. I mean, leave it to Patricia to make an absolutely fantastic point. Mm -hmm. That is a reality of this. And let me add another layer to this, Ross. Brian Dable is an intense coach. He is not a player's coach. He is going to be critical. He's going to be in your face. We see his antics on the sideline. And I like a little emotion. I can't be the madman and sit up here and tell you that I don't like a little emotion. (laughs) But you can get away with that when you're winning. Because guys want to be pushed hard and they know Mm -hmm. it's worth it. And the message works. And like, but when you've gone through the last couple of seasons, the Giants have gone through last year and then into this year, if they go 0-3, and and it's not like, you know, they lost to incredible teams. We just talked about Minnesota being the fraud out of the 2-0 and teams. And then Mm -hmm. they lose to the Commanders. Like, I think things are going to go off the wheels fast. Tony talked about this a few episodes ago on on the afternoon edition of Locked on NFL. But I think Brian Dable has a great chance to be the first coach fired this year. Because his message will wear thin because of how intense he is. And they just simply haven't gotten any better. Yeah. And teams that fire their head coaches three, four games into the season don't typically turn around into a playoff run. And if you're looking for a team that is 0-2 that has potential to really drop to 0-3, I think the Giants are primed for that conversation. And Tyler, when we talk about uh, uh, playoff chances. I am the mastermind, so I'm trying to bring numbers all the time here. Eleven and a half percent is your chance as an 0 and two team Ooh. since 1990. Only eleven and a half percent of teams made the playoffs starting 0 and two. Since that same time frame, 0 and three, two and a half percent. So you're basically done once you go 0 and three. Now you got to fight. You got 14 more games. That was before it was a 17 game season. There's always a chance. But listen, if you get to that two and a half, two and a half percent realm. And fire a coach, oh. you're cooked. You're done. You're, you're Absolutely. finished. Well, the next team we're going to talk about isn't going to fire their coach, 
but I sure think their coach is part of the problem. Let's go to Sarah Benger from Locked on Broncos. Well, right now, James, it's really whether or not Bo Nix can get on track here in the early going of the season. We've seen the Broncos go up against a couple of really good defenses to start the year. You know, Bo has faced a lot of pressure, and unfortunately, it looks like a, a quite a good percentage of that is to do with not necessarily being on the same page of Sean Payton. I know Broncos fans have been excited this, you know, off season about, Oh, Sean Payton. He finally picked a rookie quarterback that he wanted and he got his guy in the building and, you know, move on from Russell Wilson and all these sorts of things. And now we're seeing, you know, the Broncos taking the play clock all the way down to one, if not getting delays of games or having to call timeouts and things like that. The play calls, are they too long or, or is Bo Nix not hearing things or is there too many personnel shifts and changes out there? So it looks just a little discombobulated for the Broncos offensively. So while it's not on Bo Nix, that he's going to be the primary storyline for the whole season. I it's on Sean Payton. It is on Sean Payton, not Bo Nix. Sean Payton laughed at all of us in his press conference after the draft like he threw the wool over the eyes of the NFL and let <laughs> Bo Nix drop to him. Five quarterbacks went before him, bro. You didn't right. You didn't trick anybody. And he handpicked Bo Nix, got rid of Russell Wilson, didn't bring Jared Stidham, Zach Wilson. He didn't bring in any veteran quarterbacks that could have his back if Bo Nix wasn't ready. And here's the thing. He picked Bo Nix. And Bo Nix was in college for 20 years. Like, Bo Nix <laughs> and Sean Payton don't get the same, oh, young quarterback early in the season. No, Bo Nix was supposed to come in right away and be Sean Payton's guy. Sean Payton handpicked him and laughed at everybody like he got some great quarterback because the guy was ready to play right away because he was in college for so long. He does not get the same, you know, benefit of the doubt that some of these younger quarterbacks have. He should be further along in his development. They shouldn't have problems with the play calls and all that stuff. Sean Payton made his bed, and they're going to lay in it. And I, I, I don't know where the Broncos go from here if they drop to 0-3 this weekend. And they have a game that, I mean, it could be pretty difficult for them to win. So I'm looking at the Broncos like it's not the Broncos that are on notice as a team. For me, it's Sean Payton that is on yeah. notice as a team, because this is exactly what he wanted. And I mean, it doesn't look like he's going to be able to make a difference. I'm going to read a couple of names to you real quick. Uh, Tyler, uh, Sean Canfield. Okay. Is one of them. Uh, Garrett Grayson is another one. Uh, Tommy Stevens, Ian book. Those are all names oh. of quarterbacks that oh. Sean Payton drafted here in the great city of new Orleans. And they're all oh. guys you've never heard of. And they're all guys yeah. that you'll never hear about. Um, one of the biggest issues that Sean Payton had here in here in New Orleans with the New Orleans Saints is that he was never able to draft and develop quarterback talent. He all his right. successful quarterbacks, Drew Brees, free agent acquisition, Teddy Bridgewater, free agent acquisition, even found success with Jameis Winston, uh, free agent acquisition, revamping and changing, you know, Taysom Hill into this all around offensive weapon, stole him off the waiver wire from the Green Bay Packers and Mike McCarthy at the time. That's who Sean Payton has been. Sean Payton has never been the rookie quarterback developer. I will say, though, 2017, starting off with the New Orleans Saints, 0-2, turn that team into a playoff team. He's one of the few to get it done. So if anybody in this 0-2 realm is going to be able to turn things around, he's the guy with the pedigree, but he's having to do it with a rookie quarterback, a drafted quarterback, which he's not done in his career yet. Well, it reminds me of John Gruden. He mm -hmm. got credit for developing Brett Favre in Green Bay and then goes to Tampa Bay, wins with Brad Johnson, who's a vet, never okay. developed Sean mm -hmm. King. Any other play, you know, go look at in Oakland, never got the best out of Derek Carr. Like, some of these guys get credit, and if you look back, it's like, did you really ever develop a quarterback for real? Right. I don't right. know. All right, Ross, we'll finish this the same way we finished the last segment. Rapid fire. Oh, and two teams. Which of these teams do you think is most likely to bounce back and make the playoffs? Broncos, Giants, mm -hmm. Bengals, Ravens, Jags, Colts, Titans, Rams, Panthers. 0-2 team, who bounces back and makes the playoffs? There's some surprisingly good teams in that bunch. I'm going to say the Baltimore Ravens. They've got the quarterback. They've got the coach. They've got the defense. They've got the scheme. They have something that makes them unique. I'll go Baltimore. Okay, and I'm going to stick with my playoff prediction that it's the Cincinnati Bengals that sure. make the playoffs. That was the other one I was Their next of. few games, 
They play Washington Commanders this week. They're at the Carolina Panthers in week four. After that, they do play Baltimore at home, but then they're at Giants, at Browns. They play the Raiders as well. The Bengals have a great schedule to turn things around, so I'll go with the Bengals. But that's going to do it for this Football Friday edition of the Locked On NFL Podcast. I am your host, Tyler Rowland, the madman, here, as always on Fridays, with the mastermind, Ross Jackson. Football is back, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you all enjoy, and as I tell you every single episode, stay safe out there.